Thank you so much for clicking on this video. Things that need to be addressed, things that I've been procrastinating on and it's not good. This is my last little piece of my Paphiopedalum volatilum XL. Not very XL looking, is it? The other, the bigger piece died because I miscalculated the angle of the sun and it just took a couple of hours to singe the leaves. And with that, the orchid was done. This one was from the beginning. I got this little piece off the mother plant and um, kept it. No roots, nothing. So I'm, I've had it in this moss little setup here for uh, quite a while. And depending on what I find, it's going back in moss, but fresh. But I would like to put it into this pot with Akadama and Terrarium grit together to give it a more moist environment and something, what, what have I just, that won't degrade. And well, I have one little bit of root to work with. Teeny tiny root. Okay, decisions, decisions. I know this looks like overkill, but I'm gonna risk it with the Akadama. Yeah. There's no other way to find out whether this is going to work or not. I'm already, I'm losing probably this little leaf down here. Let's have a look, see. So I'm gonna lose this leaf here, just as a point of reference for future updates. But it, it has grown this leaf and it's starting on another one. So it is trying. And I really do want to try and see if this will work because it can also work then for my other slipper orchids if the Akadama works. Sometimes I find that um, Lekka can be a bit too dry for some of the paths. And the way I flush, I can get carried away. I can be a little bit too aggressive. So I, I'm trying to stop myself from doing that. But in order to avoid an error, just because one can get careless, at least I can, I want to be able to somehow cover my bases. And I'm wondering if this is the right idea, simply because I can flush through the pot without raising the level. But if I want to be super cautious, I can sink the pot into water right to the level of the holes. And the Akadama is so, so wicking that it will actually wick throughout the whole media. And that is where I'm kind of headed in my mind. And I sound, I do sound a little bit hesitant because I am, it's a first for me. And while I was thinking all of that through, talking out loud, I thought that I could leave a little bit of the terrarium grip for top dressing to have a drier environment around the base of the orchid. Now that I've figured that out, I'm comfortable. It is the base of the slipper orchids in the self-watering setup when it comes to flushing that always have me a little bit worried. I think I'm going to need all of this. I don't want to be too radical with my spoon because the Akadama falls apart quite quickly. I still have a nice warm rest of the day that when the flushing happens afterwards to wash out all the debris that has actually deteriorated as I'm touching this Akadama, at least the base can dry off enough. It's not super, super sunny, which is good. That means the orchid can stay outside for a little bit until she dries out. So that's all I'm going to take. You see, the thing with Akadama, it breaks down when it's wet and you touch it or and you manipulate it. But actually, it's, it maintains its form throughout a long period of time if you just leave it be. All this maneuvering with my spoon and the abrasion causes the Akadama to kind of fall apart. But after that, it doesn't. 
So let's get started. I also have the little stars to deal with. I will show you when we've taken care of this one what's going on with the little stars. Absolutely terrible. I can't wait to intervene with an update for a care collab. Before I even proceed with anything else, lesson learned from last time when I did the Serato stylus, I'm going to just flush out the main part of the debris. You see how brown that water is? And I will be flushing that until it runs clear without the orchid in it. Learn by doing, right? Because I don't want to open a big bag of Akadama just yet, I went and just flushed out what I have left in here to try and use that up as best as possible. At least raise the level a little bit. There's a difference between I know what I'm doing and I'm trying to get to know what I'm doing and make it better in using this Akadama. And that is what you hear in my voice right now. And I like to be able to document this together with you instead of making it appear as though I have all the answers, which in this case I don't. So let's just give that another flush. Previously it ran pretty clear. Let's see where the orchid is gonna sit. Yeah, that'll work for me. I hope it works for the orchid. Fiddle, fiddle. Let's get one root a little bit situated. That one root, precious, precious root. Now the leaves are sitting on the terrarium grit, which I much prefer to having them sit on damp sphagnum moss, because the terrarium grit will dry out. The sphagnum moss takes a little bit longer. Bottom of the bag. I have some other stuff, but not the same. That's why I'm keeping this as a sample, because I do want it back. I want, I'd like to have the same material back. Got some other aquarium gravel type stuff, but it hasn't got the same kind of porous texture to it like this has. So this is all touch and go, no guarantees. If it does well, we'll find out in a few months. If it doesn't do well, we will find out in no less than a week, 10 days. I hope the former will be the case. Again, that little leaf is going down anyway. So I'm using that as my marker. And for now, just make sure where my holes are. For now, that will be it for this little one. No guarantees. It's a beautiful day, even though it is cloudy, there's a lot going on and around me. We're expecting some seriously bad weather soon, so everybody is kind of like doing what they have to do, including myself, outside while they can. And that is the Bellatulum. Fingers crossed now that this is going to work and to make it happy. We shall find out soon enough. My bigger headache is coming up right now. After I filmed the care collab video of my Brassavola little stars, look at it. Look at that. All gone. Everything fell off. So what I thought was a lead is not anymore. And now I am going to intervene. I said in my care collab video, I was not going to intervene because there was no need. I don't want to stress out an orchid further by, by maneuvering and doing things and 
But this happened in the last five days. So it's over for this one in Lecker. This has be become now a rescue. Even though you would say, well, it already was a rescue. Yes, and I would say, but it wasn't this bad. Today, when I went to have a look at her, I just touched across the top and three more pseudobulbs just came off, well, leaves just came off right off the top. Since the last time we saw her and I thought I had maybe two leads, nope, there's nothing here. And all the bulbs here, they're all gone. I have some roots that are gonna we need some cleanup. This is what they looked like. So I just left that on to show you. They just yellowed from the top. And that's it. We're gonna cut her and see whether there's rot in there, whether it's all history, or whether there's something that I can salvage. I doubt I can see anything in this teeny tiny rhizome. First of all, let me remove all these dead roots. I wonder if um, moving her was an issue from, oh gosh, even this one just fell off. Yeah, this is rotted. And this is what they've all done. <clears throat> I wonder if I, by moving her and filming her, I took her out of that one little position that she was safe in. And then I exposed her to the stress of the outdoors for that short period of time. I don't know. I don't regret doing it. Please don't get me wrong. That's not why I'm saying it. I don't regret doing it at all. These Care Collab videos are very important. But I can't wait for an update on a Care Collab to be doing the intervention of this one. So, wow. That was a turn for the worse. And one would say that escalated quickly. There is a little eye down here. Hmm. Let's have a look, see. If I can remove this sheath without ruining another leaf. Because if, if, if the leaves are gone, then she has nothing to photosynthesize with. The sheaths feel wet. I have had a few humid days lately. Humid for me, 60%. That's a lot of humidity for me. But I can't now say whether this sheath was wet because I've been touching the wet orchid when I unpotted her and it just soaked up the moisture or whether it was wet. And that's why the leaf just died back. I can't say. I didn't gauge the texture of the sheaths prior to doing this and I wasn't expecting one of the green ones just to pop off. But that does feel wet. The others feel dry. So there's nothing really to be said or do, to do here. It's a, just to, yeah, that's, that's rot from the bottom. Remember in my Care Collab video where I said if everything is dry, everything is good, there's no rot? Well, that changed quickly. That changed very, very quickly. Okay, so what are we gonna do with this one? I can't really show you a rhizome because it's so tiny. Let me see if you see anything. I mean, I'm not even speaking of the F-bomb anymore. The fact that I kept this orchid for this long borders on a miracle. I would have been done with her for a long time. 
But I mean, that rhizome even looks like it's dead to me. There's nothing, there's no substance in that rhizome at all. I don't even know if I've got this in focus. It's so tiny. So yeah, the plan was, the plan was to put her in one of my bottles, a bottle like this one, and some hub material at the bottom, just for the humidity, but if she's wet, I wonder if that is a good idea. Seeing as she is wet on the bottom as it is, she does need something. So I'm just filling the crevices down here with water, making sure that my material has access to that water. And the plan is then just to see if she's going to pull through. Now I do have a little dome for this bottle, but being as that she was wet, I don't think I'm going to put the dome on at all because the idea was to do this. But she is so damp at the base that this is all I'm going to leave her. I'm not even going to fuss any further. That's it. Just want to show you one thing. Just one thing. Sometimes when I get an orchid that has suffered on the root department because it was in Lekka, the Lekka is very, very dirty because all the debris of the dead roots actually stay in and around the Lekka and it becomes, well, sandy and icky like we saw on the base. So there is a little bit of sand and stuff and that is to be expected. That could be all the things from the past years, the dust and all that from the atmosphere. But you see that the Lekka beads are super clean themselves. No dead roots, nothing. Nothing attached itself. So the orchid never really grew roots in the two and a half years she was in that pot. That is something that I need to think about. All my other brassavolas are doing super well in the setup of Lekka and self-watering. This one never grew any roots from the moment I received her. Well, just wanted to show you how clean the Lekka is. However, I do appreciate that you took the time to watch this video. Let's hope that it's not all lost and I hope to see you in the next one despite this. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Take care, stay safe. Bye.